Okay, so on the Prusa i3, um, this is the y-axis. I've got the y-axis pretty much all assembled here. Um, it's pretty uh, easy to see what's going on here. I'm just going to go through the build order. Um, you start with the four corners pieces. I've got 716th rod here. If you're building a metric version, this is M10 rod. Um, be sure to put a couple of nuts on here. That's what attaches this bit to the wood frame later on, or metal frame if you're building a metal frame version. Uh, put it through here. The ends you want to assemble, uh, you'll notice this is M10 or 516 inch rod here. And um, you want to put nuts, washer, this is the motor holder, washers, nuts, and then nuts here, washers, and then put it into the end pieces here. And then another pair of washers, nuts on both sides. Don't tighten it up yet uh, until you get the other side together. Um, other side, similar except you're just tightening up, uh, or you're just putting in the, uh, the belt tensioner. Um, and uh, the belt tensioner has got a pair of 624 bearings in here. There's two bearings in there. Uh, it has a, I don't know what the metric size is on that, uh, probably M4. Uh, I'm using a number 10 uh, SAE uh, screw there. Uh, also, there's a nut inside of there that this screw goes through. You tension the belt by tightening this up after we get all everything all done. Don't worry about that yet. Um, when you get all of this stuff basically together, you want to uh, drop in your rods here. These are 370 millimeter rods. Uh, tighten up the big heavy uh, thing to where it's basically square. Just use your measure to uh, to get a, a length on that and get them. So this is together. Um, oh yes. When you put these corners in, notice that there's a stop here. Don't put the stop on the wrong side, you'll be reassembling it later. Um, if, when you're tightening this bit up, these these pieces, leave the bottom one loose for, for right now. Move this nut right to the edge, and then tighten this side up. And then you want to adjust these two nuts until measure from like right there to the same place on the other side this should be 165 millimeters uh, exactly uh, you can sit here and you can use a pair of uh, open end wrenches and you can you can loosen one side tighten the other side you can really really precisely control that get it as close as you can to 165 do the same thing on the other side uh, don't don't fasten that that smooth ride down yet. Then what you want to do is put your uh, linear bearings into the linear bearing holders. Don't put these little tightener things in yet because they get in the way of you shooting these wood screws in. Uh, do that for all three of these. Then you want to mark this piece of plywood. 20 millimeters down on one side. This is, I think, a 230 millimeter wide piece of plywood. Uh, 20 millimeters down on this side, and then 58 millimeters in from either side. And then measure to the center here, which is 115. Just make a tick mark there. Um, put these, uh, slide these bushings, two of them on one side and one on the other, into the smooth rod. Um, put the smooth rod into the y-axis assembly, put these uh, uh, zip ties on, cinch them down so that that's together, and uh, then lay your plywood down, lay this over the top of it, line everything up here so that these two screw holes, you can peek through those screw holes and see that line in there, and then you want the 58 millimeters here and 58 millimeters here, and then shoot a couple of screws into here. 
Um, don't put the other side in yet uh, until you do this side. Line that up with a little tick mark, shoot a screw in there, and then once everything's all steady, push, shoot the other three screws in. And that gets your bushings in there. Now if you want to, you can put these uh, screws in and t cinch down those linear bearings. Um, on the belt holder, what you want to do is, well, I guess first you need to get the motor in there. Uh, use a couple of M3 by 10 millimeter screws to put your uh, motor in and uh, you want your pulley on the motor as well at this time. Um, fish the uh, belt through the, bush, the bearing at this side and around here and I've seen some instructions that have you cutting this bit out in order to make it easy to slide the belt in there. When I try doing that as soon as I start cinching this thing down, it just breaks one of these pieces off. So I really don't recommend doing that. You push this thing through, it's kind of a pain in the neck, but you can get a little piece of wire or very small Allen wrench or something like that and use it to fish the uh, belt up and over like this. And then uh, this is actually way more secure than you think it is because the belt is grabbing on itself. The teeth are meshing here. And then you just cinch this down, it'll never move. Um, doesn't have to be super tight. Uh, this is about where I think it should be for printing, but that's because I've already tightened this up a bit. Um, you can, it can be, you know, not super loose, but bring it up snug, um, and it, it can it can be a little wobbly, uh, and then you can uh, tighten it up here later. And uh, oh, one more thing, I've got down here. I've already got that end stop in place. Uh, these little micro switches, uh, the screw that you, I don't even know what kind of screw you need to go through those micro switches, super tiny. What I do is I use a number four. Um, I don't know if that'd be like an M2 or M2.5 or something like that uh, to go through there and I drill that out. Uh, you can't drill it much bigger than that or you'll break the switch. But I've, been, I've always drilled these out so that just barely big enough to fit a number for screw through there. Um, the switches that I've got have quite long actuation arms on them so I bend them so that they nearly touch the rod then when the build plate moves over this way it hits the switch. The, the bushing holder hits the switch and uh, that gives you your end stop for the uh, y-axis. I believe that's about it. That is, you can set the subassembly aside until later.